Jim Rowan, how you going? We continue with the history. Last week saw the end of the Best of the Super Juniors with uh, Wataru Inoue coming away. The Best of Super Junior champion. He is the Best Super Junior. Uh, well, he was for a short time because straight after that he vacated the championship that he held, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship and um, left the division altogether so he's now the best former junior perhaps um, and that's only that's the only real change in terms of the title scene um, so yeah there's the, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship is currently vacant the Tag Team Championship is still with Akira and Jushin Thunder Liger. The Heavyweight Tag Championship is still with MVP, Togi Mikabe and Toriyano. And the IWGP Heavyweight Championship is on Keiji Muto. New Japan Cup winner was Tanahashi. Uh, and uh, yeah, of course, just mentioned, the second tournament has now concluded for the year. Uh, best of Super Juniors, in a way defeating Koji Kenemoto on the 15th of June 2008. Outside of the company, the Triple Count Championship is on Suwama. TNA World Heavyweight title is held by Samoa Joe. The 0-1 Max World Heavyweight title is held by Masato Tanaka. And also the uh, WEW Heavyweight title, we didn't mention last time. It's on Mamet Sasaki. So let's pick up where we left off. It's the 22nd of June, 2008. One night only in Gifu. In Gifu Industrial Hall, an attendance of apparently 3,000 people, where they saw Jado defeat Kazuchika Okada, Inoue defeat Honma, a heavyweight, GBH's Izuka and Makabe, defeated Tenzan and Chono, so that uh, GBH feud with Tenzan still continues and will do for a while. And in a singles match, Nakanishi defeated Takao Omori, which I believe is um, him getting a win back. I think he lost to Omori not that long ago, so Nakanishi pulling one back. Skipping over to TNA for a moment. Um, there was the first round of the TNA World Cup tournament. Um, we covered this a little bit in the last podcast. <clears throat> so there's four teams. There's team TNA slash US, which is Kaz, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, Curry Man. Team Mexico, I won't read them all. Team Mexico, Team Japan, and Team uh, International. So the, the round one was tag team matches. Round two is singles matches. There's already been um, at least one match we win. There was the Motor City Machine Guns, which is Alex Shelley and Chris Saban defeating Davari and Tyson Ducks. I'm just going to call them Ducks. Um, from Team International, so just from a brief scan, I think that's the only first round match that's occurred in this tournament. Um, so we have the Team Mexico, Ray Bucanero and Ultimo Guerrero of Team Mexico, yeah, uh, defeating the Japanese team, so Masato Yoshino and Naruki Doi. Um, and all the other teams were watching on. Actually, I've got the link to this, if you want to watch it. It's only a quick match because it's on TNA Impact, but um, I'll put that in the description. On the 27th of June, NJPW Premium in Korokuen Hall, 1,500 in attendance for the one-night tag tournament, the Ukes Cup. I'll skip ahead to the finals. So the semi-final was Tenzan and Otani defeating... Hiro Saito and Super Strong Machine. 
The other semi was Jushin Thunder Liger and Nakanishi defeating Omori and Fujinami. And then in the final, Tenzan and Otani got the job done to win the tournament over Jushin Thunder Liger and Nakanishi. Did that mean anything? Likely no. The next night, 28th, uh, we jump over to All Japan, who are in Osaka's Prefectural Gymnasium, uh, over 3,000 in attendance, to see Minabu Nakanishi defeat Nobutaka Araya. So Nakanishi's over there in All Japan to build up his IWGP title match against Muto. And the reason they used Araya here is because Araya's specialty is the Moonsault, uh, which is, of course, Mudo's finish. So the key spot in this match was Araya doing the Moonsault. He hit it, but Nakanishi kicked out, and then he came back to win. Um, a pretty big card for All Japan. They also had the junior heavyweight title on the line. Hiji Kata defended against, successfully, he had the championship, defended against El Samurai, another New Japan guy. The tag titles were on the line, Suzuki and Taiyo Kea, defeating Joe Doring and Keiji Muto, so Muto um, suffering a loss on the same card that Nakanishi is next challenger for the IWGP championship, picked up a win. So that's a title change. The All Japan World Tag Team chi uh, titles are now on Garentai, Minoru Suzuki and Taiyo Kea. And then the um, main event was for the Triple, tri triple Crown Championship. Suwama defended successfully against Osamu Nishimura. And once again, oh, we're jumping around a lot early, aren't we? The TNA tournament. Um, oh, I've put this in at the wrong spot. That's quite embarrassing. Uh, which, by the way, is July. We're in July now. We've changed months. We're into July. The 3rd of July on the next episode of Impact, I suppose. Yeah, it was. The World Cup enters the second round, which is singles matches. Ray Bucanero of Mexico defeated Alex Kozlov of the international team in two minutes, so that sounds like a classic. And uh, Milana Collection defeated Curry Man of the TNA slash US team. So Milano goes through. And he's really, I think he's really the only, there's a couple guys that work with New Japan, but he's, I think, the only actual New Japan guy in this tournament. So if you're wondering why I bother covering this, blame Milano. 5th of July. Now we're into the uh, a new tour with New Japan. New Japan Thrill. Oh no, New Japan Trill in Shizuoka. And we begin a tournament for the vacant IWGB Junior Heavyweight Championship. So the first round saw Yujiro defeat his tag team partner Nets, uh, Tetsuya Naito. And also Akira defeating Jado. There was a couple matches in between, but they're not that interesting. So we also saw Prince Devitt defeating Gato and Liger defeating Minoru. That's a big one. So they all go through to the next round. The second last match was Tenzan with Nakanishi and Nagata defeating Izuka, Honma and Ishii of Great Bash Heel. So Tenzan finally on the winning side of one of those matches is not usually. And then in the main event, Giant Bernard and Hiroki Goto of Rise team with Rick Fuller to take on and they defeat Togi Makabe, Toru Yano, and Carl Anderson. So this is Rick Fuller's New Japan debut. He was a guy that was around in the WCW power plant, power plant days. Um, apparently he was talked about in fairly high regard, pretty big guy, moves pretty well, um, but that's a long time ago. Now, I mean, that's nearly 10 years ago at this point. So, um, 
He's come in, of course, to replace the other big American muscly dude, Tyson Tomko, who um, has just uh, gone back to TNA. Uh, actually, no, he's still working with IGF, I think, but he's done with New Japan. So now, Giant Venable team with Rick Fuller, and they start with a win. The next night, on the 6th of July, Korokon Hall again, 1800 in attendance. It was a bit of a New Japan um, slash Zero One interpromotional card. So um, there was, well, the opener is more important than all of that. Tetsuya Naito picking up a win over Nobuo Yoshihashi. Yoshihashi makes his New Japan debut and life on Earth changes as we know it forever. A star is born. Nobuo. Is that how you say it? Nobuo? Nobuo. Yoshihashi. Um, so there you go. Yoshihashi's debut. What a moment. The... Junior Heavyweight Title Tournament continues the second round. Prince Deva defeated Yujiro. Akira defeated Liger, his tag team partner. Then we had uh, the first match with just Bernard and Rick Fuller uh, working together in the, a tag team, two on two. They defeated Carl Anderson and Toru Yano. Uh, there was another GBH versus Legend match. Uh, the GBH got the best of and then Koji Kanemoto defeated Jimmy Rave in the second round of the Junior Heavyweight title tournament, um, putting Koji Kanemoto into the semi-finals. But after this show, Kanemoto got into a bicycle incident, or accident, and he hurt his knee. So this is actually the last time we'll see Kanemoto until September, which isn't too long out, I mean, it's July, but Still, it certainly puts him out of this tournament, um, despite defeating Jimmy Rave here. And then Tiger Mask in the other... Oh, yeah, so he was supposed to go to the semi-final. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so someone's going to get a bye. We'll get to that. But Tiger Mask in the final second round match defeated Taguchi. Also on that card, Goto and Nakamura teamed up to defeat Inoue and Nagata. Nakanishi defeated Makabe in the main event. That's a huge win. That's, that's Nakanishi's biggest win for sure. Uh, and certainly solidifies his spot as number one contender now to Keiji Muto's IWGP Championship. Uh, that match is to take place on the 21st, so just in a couple weeks' time. Um, we'll definitely get to that on this episode. But the next night, the 7th of July, now it's Okada picking up a win. This is Okada's first win, and it's over Yoshihashi, because now there's finally a young lion that's newer than he is, because of course, and I, I have been making note of most of them, Okada. It's just fun. It's just fun knowing how Okada turns out and seeing him lose all these matches, just one after the other. But here he gets a win. Okada beats Yoshihashi. He is Yoshihashi's Young Lion Senior. And, um, I mean, I should actually probably uh, just specify. It's Okada's first win in a New Japan ring. I'm not saying he's never won a match before. But um, it is the beginning of an insane record between these two because Okada would go on to beat Yoshihashi another 10 times in singles contests. The last of which being after returning from excursion and I'm getting ahead of myself here but it's it's okay this is pretty well known stuff when Okada goes away on excursion he comes back in the Tokyo Dome in 2012 that's the tenth time he beats Yoshihashi in a singles match the first non Yoshihashi Okada the first non-Yoshihashi that Okada beats in a singles match. That's a stupid way of saying it. Let me start again. The first person that Okada beats in a singles match in New Japan was Hiroshi Tanahashi v. 
for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. The first person that wasn't Yoshihashi. I feel like I made such a butcher, uh, such a mess of <laughs> explaining that, but um, hopefully it's you can you can figure it out. Uh, so he, the only s singles victory he has up until facing um, Tanahashi is over Yoshihashi. The only singles victories in a New Japan ring is over Yoshihashi ten different times, and then he fights for the title and wins. That's pretty insane. Um, then we had, uh, oh, actually, I'll, I'll read this one because we've got the link for it. So, Hirasawa and Choshu defeated Shito Ueda and Takao Amori when Ricky No sells a, dri a diving knee drop from Amori and then Lariat's Ueda to win. It's a bit of a random match to showcase, but, uh, yeah, I found it on New Japan's Japanese YouTube channel, so check that out in the description. Actually, let me just make sure because I've kind of put them aside. Um, yep, I've got it there. Okay, that'll be in the description. And now I've got to find my place again. Because... There's some more matches on this card from the 7th. Uh, Tanaka and Otani. Hey, you might have forgotten by now. Oh no, wait, this wasn't the Zero One Max show. Actually, what was I talking about there? None of those matches were zero one one guys, so that was just a lie. I don't know where I got that from. I might have attached it to the wrong one. We'll look out for some zero one one max guys. I feel like there was on a, on a different one that I read out before, but that's okay. No big deal. So, um, still on the 7th of July. Well, actually, it was this one, wasn't it? That's what I got mixed up. So let me just take this off here. So it wasn't the sixth that was a zero one max show or an interpromotional show. It was the seventh. So on the seventh, Okada beats Yoshihashi. Hirasawa and Choshu defeat Ueda and Amori. Tanaka and Otani defeat Nakanishi. Oh, sorry, they don't defeat Nakanishi and Nagata. They go to a time limit draw after 30 minutes. And then we just get an extra five minutes of Tanaka versus Nagata. Because um, uh, Nagata's entering, he's got a, a feud starting with Tanaka over that um, heavyweight title, zero one one heavyweight title that Tanaka holds. That was the main event. Apparently quite a bloody brawl between those two. Um, and apparently pretty good. The next night again on the 8th, Hirasawa defeats Yoshihashi this time. We have one... Well, one of one junior heavyweight title tournament semifinals because, of course, the other semifinal can't go ahead without Kanemoto. Uh, and it's Prince Devitt that gets a bye straight into the semi, sorry, straight into the, the grand final of the tournament. Um, whilst Tiger Mask has to have two matches on the one card, so he defeats Akira in the semi-final to go on to that final, which we'll get to. A few other tag team matches in between. Um, nothing that interesting, to be honest, so we'll move straight to it. The IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title Tournament Final Tiger Mask against Prince Devitt, and I did find this one as well. Um, I believe this is on the New Japan... Yes, it is. New Japan's Japanese YouTube, so you can watch that one in full. But um, it's a good match, I'll, I'll go through it here. So uh, if you haven't had this, if we haven't shown a Devitt match before, he comes out to, well, I know the song from Karate Kid. You're the best around, nothing's gonna ever keep you down. He comes out, that's his uh, entrance theme. And this is, Apparently, I think it's first championship match for singles gold. Of course, he's held tag gold before. I think this is his first shot at holding a singles championship in New Japan. So, um, he, he's gone through, just as a reminder, Gato and Yujiro on the way to the final 
but Tiger Mask had a much tougher road. He had to beat Deguchi um, and Akira earlier in the night. So it's this, again, it's the second match in the same event. Devitt starts very aggressively and goes for the kill with an avalanche suplex early. He doesn't follow Tiger out of the ring when the veteran needs a, a breather though. Well, not right away anyway, but um, cause, uh, at first I was thinking, well, he's just going for the, he's trying to wear him out as quickly as possible while he's still fresh. He just wants to pour the pressure on Tiger Mask, but um, he changes tactics, does Devitt. He starts aggressively, um, then going for the legs of Tiger, but he might not be completely confident in his submission holds because he seems to give up on him fairly quickly and changes his offense, so that's possibly the uh, lack of uh, experience from Devitt as well, just not being fully confident in his abilities and not having a clear tactic to win this match, which against a guy as experienced as Tiger Mask, it's, um, he's going to have to be. So Eventually, Tiger Mask escapes as a result of that. He fakes Devitt out with a neat rope swing, but then when he goes to dive out, it's Devitt's boot waiting for him. He tries to climb the turnbuckle, Devitt, but he is caught by Tiger, and he, Devitt's thrown overhead to the canvas far below. Devitt recovers quickly though. He knocks Tiger out of the ring. He dives over the ropes, but overshoots and lands in the crowd. That was pretty crazy. Everyone seems okay though. Devitt isn't done with the audience yet though. He topples into them moments later, although this time it was Tiger that did that to him. And then Tiger attacks off the top rope with a crossbody, and this match is just kind of getting crazy at this point. Tiger lands a back suplex off the turnbuckle, and then he drag that's after dragging Devitt back into the ring, and then he hits the tombstone pole driver, or he tries to, it's reversed, Devitt hits it instead. And um, Devitt's moving a bit gingerly at this point, but he's still full of energy, he climbs the turnbuckle, he hits a double foot stomp, Tiger kicks out at two. And this match is just going a mile a minute, uh, and they can't keep up the, this kind of pace, it's, it's pretty crazy. Devitt goes for his brain buster, the bloody Sunday, but Tiger squirms free and hits a 619. The crowd chant for Tiger as he tries to regain some momentum. They trade pins back and forth. Devitt hits an overhead kick on Tiger as he tried to set up a turnbuckle move. So now Devitt tries to take control, but Tiger wrestles back the advantage with a, a Frankensteiner off the top turnbuckle, only for Devitt to roll through and nearly pin. Tiger. So the crowd are just shrieking with excitement by this stage. Tiger hits the tombstone pile driver, follows up with kicks, hits the standing moonsault knee press, but Devitt still stays alive after that. Tiger Mask steps it up with the move he innovated, the Millennium Suplex, which is kind of like a cross-faced chicken wing version of a sleeper suplex. But he's not done yet. Tiger nails the Tiger Suplex, Bridges it perfectly, and that is enough to finally keep the young man down after a terrific effort. It was a crazy match. It was a great match. Uh, really fun to watch, so I do recommend you go check it out. And it ends with Tiger Mask entering his fourth reign as IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion uh, since his, his first reign was as early as... It was like back in 2003. So, um, yeah, he's been at the top of that division for quite a while now. But... Devitt showed himself to be worthy of uh, being at the top of that division and of course very young so he's the future of that division I think is what this match showcased just not the immediate future the main event on that um, actually no we're not up to the main event yet there was a singles match um, a bit of a strange one to me Yuji Nagata defeats Hiroki Goto just because I say strange, um, Goto has, I mean, he, he just lost to Nakanishi, um, and Nagata's not really done too much in 2008. Of course, if you've been following this series for a while, or if you just watched at the time, or what have you, you would know that Nagata had a big 2007. 
but he just hasn't done much in 2008 as yet, and we're over halfway through the year. So, because um, I mean, um, 2008 started for Nagata at the Tokyo Dome, failing to get the third belt, the IWGP third belt, back off Kurt Angle, which was a fun match, but still he lost. Um, and now he's kind of doing this cross promotional thing with um, Zero One. So I guess it's cool that they're keeping it strong as far as, keeping him strong as far as, you know, contenders for other people's, other promotions, world titles go. But yeah, they're, they're, they're really cooling off Goto. Anyway, um, the main event of this match is, and sorry, of this card is another match that you can find um, on New Japan's YouTube. Uh, so I'll, I'll link that there. It's also though on New Japan World if you prefer that. I I'm just going to check it out here. Turn the sound off as quick as I can. Oh no. Never mind. The what what New Japan World has, or at least what I've linked here, for some reason it's listed under 2008. Um, is because retirement event. So I don't know what the deal is there, but it's got highlights of his career if you're interested in in that. But um, no, never mind. I won't link that. Um, the I'll just take it out, just to be clear. The match I speak of is a, lumber de uh, a lumberjack death match between Hiroyoshi Tenzan and Takashi Izuka. So that is what is going to be linked. Um, I'm just going to take this New Japan World link out because it's not useful for us. Um, yeah, oh, actually I'll get rid of this completely. So, of course this feud continues um, and it's worth a watch just because it's such a significant feud of 2008. Um, the baby faces walk out for this one first. It's hard to distinguish them at first glance. Um, but uh, GBH walk out next. Yano, Gato, Honma, Jado, Anderson's there as well, uh, Makabe, Ishii. They all come out, and then Izuka's music hits, and out comes the maniac with the iron glove. He's booed as he enters the arena. He he's calm, but he's in an, it's kind of calm in a menacing way. He takes his time before entering entering the ring. He circles around it. He finally rolls in when um, Tenzan. Sorry, when I mentioned before that the baby faces walk out. I shouldn't assume. I mean, of course, the lumberjacks, the people that will surround the ring. If you don't know what a lumberjack match is, it's because there's a bunch of people that will surround the ring, and if the match gets out of the ring, then they'll all, they're supposed to throw you back in, but, you know, they might also have their go at dealing some of their own damage as well. Um, and considering it's a lumberjack, lumberjack death match, I don't know. They, I mean, it's GBH, so they've got weapons anyway. But um, yeah, this one is uh, this is a dangerous scenario. So the baby faces are out there. GBH come out. They're going to fill out the rest of the lumberjack spots. Um, Iska's there, and then out comes Tenzan, and he gets a lot of cheers and chants as he enters the arena. It's very much. Uh, baby face, you know, versus heel. It's 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 a it's a clear line between. Um, you know, the, the the fans are partial. Um, to Tenzan, so he gets straight into the ring. He stands in the center, impatiently gesturing at his opponent. He wants a piece of Iska. The bell finally rings, and Tenzan. Wastes no time attacking Iska with force. Iska tries to escape, but he rolls the wrong way and is pushed back in by the babyface lumberjacks. And then he goes the wrong way again 
and Tenzan's attack continues. The first time Tenzan comes too close to the GBH side, however, he cops a steel chair in the back from Yano. Tenzan gets thrown to GBH and all hell breaks loose between everyone. They manage to isolate Tenzan and toward the back of the arena, Iska smacks him over the head with a chair. His lumberjacks are proven pretty useless, Tenzan unfortunately. GBH of course just have much more experience in brawling. So they're, they're certainly at an advantage here. Um, plus a few of the, at least a few of the um, babyface side appear to just be the young lions. So while GBH are used to using weapons in brawling, the young lions are used to just getting thrown about. So Iska drags Tenzan back to the ring. He drives his head into the ring post and that unsurprisingly busts him open. So, uh, yeah, Tenzan's bleeding. Makabe hits him in the head with a chain. Iska continues to strike him with a chair. And this is just in the first five minutes, by the way. Uh, and it's already a bloody mess. Uh, the next five minutes of, uh, of the opening ten minutes of the match are very different to the first five minutes, though. Um, because... The match continues with a distinct advantage to Izka. It was a real turning point when the match left the ring. Tenzan does manage a, a comeback. He's sp spurred on by the crowd chanting his name, but it's... He's, he's still clearly short a step, I would say. Um, and Izka pulls the referee in between them like he needs any more advantages to hit a low blow, uh, followed by yet another disgusting chair shot to the head. Iska relentlessly slams the chair down on this just motionless Tenzan. Um, I don't know why he felt the need to involve the referee to death match. I think he's allowed to do all this, but that's when Gato jumps up on the apron to reveal that he has the hidden iron glove, or he has hidden the iron glove by strapping it to his chest to perhaps avoid confiscation. Uh, as if the referee had any control over this anyway. Uh, and then Tenzan blocks the uh, blow when the iron glove comes towards him, so he picks up the device himself. The crowd cheer as he slides it on. He hits Iska with some iron Mongolian chops, and meanwhile the lumberjacks are preoccupied with each other, brawling around the ring. So now Iska's been busted open with this thing, and Tenzan viciously bites at the wound to open it further. Iska's forehead is now leaking profusely. He tries to escape, but he's pushed back in. Tenzan hits the mountain bomb, and then a spinning heel kick. He goes up for the headbutt and lands it, but Red Shoes is still out, so he can't count. Tenzan tries to revive him, and then he looks to go for a moonsault, but he's struck from the outside with a chair, and that gives the uh, crazy man Iska a chance to stumble to his feet, hits an exploder suplex, uh, actually, which he calls a blizzard suplex. Um, and then he wraps, Iska wraps his arms around the head of Tenzan in a sleeper hold, but Tenzan dives into the turnbuckle to knock him off. Now Uno's finally recovered, the referee, and Tenzan hits a back suplex that earns him a two count. GBH haven't interfered as much as usual, um, which is strange considering they were actually invited to the ring for once. Um, but then... Tenzan has his feet grabbed by one of them on the turnbuckle, which allowed Iska to climb up and throw him down. And then Iska calls for a weapon. Uh, GB had set up a table at ringside, which is quite a, you know, subtle. I'm sure that won't play a part in the finish. Iska pulls Tenzan out to the apron, but it backfires when uh, Tenzan, the fierce bull, lifts him up instead drives him down through the table with a modified TTD. GBH are oddly shocked by this and don't intervene. When Iska rolls Iska back into the ring, he hits another TTD right in the center. Instead of going for the pin though, he puts Iska through more pain by adding the Anaconda Vice to his string of moves. And without help from GBH, Iska's got no chance of survival. And he quits, and the crowd cheers, and the referee calls for the bell, and Tenzan's pulled one back over his rival Iska, making him quit, which uh, I'm sure is much more satisfying than just getting a pinfall.
But now GBH do run in and they attack the winner mercilessly. Maccabi strikes him with the chain. There's no one out there to help Tenzan until Kojima runs out. Satoshi Kojima runs out. The crowd goes crazy. Kojima clears the ring. He suplexes Maccabi off the turnbuckle. He gives Yano a cutter. Kojima's been out with injury for weeks and he hasn't been in a New Japan ring since the 2006 G1 Climax final when Tenzan defeated him to win the tournament. Because, of course, these two are tag partners and uh, kind of rivals in, in other ways. But he grabs the mic, Kojima, he dresses GBH, he says, with his elbow, his right elbow heavily taped. He turns to Tenzan, remembering his old friend turned rival, and, uh, we, and Tenzan's overcome with emotion. He kind of, he talks to Tenzan, of course, I don't understand exactly what he's saying, but it seems to be that they're negotiating a unification, get the team back together, the crowd chant Tenkoji, Tenzan offers his hand, and Kojima doesn't hesitate to shake it before leaving. So Tenzan signs off with a big cheer to end the event, but uh, what a finish to the event. A huge return for Kojima, the crowd went crazy for it, and um, that, if nothing else, is a reason to watch this clip that will be in the description. But um, the end of the match, of course, once again, Tenzan defeating Iska in that Lumberjack death match. Um, but their feud is not over, not by a long shot. And now Kojima is a part of it as well. Now he's got someone that hopefully he can trust as a tag partner. Moving along, on the 10th. Uh, we continue this World Cup tournament in TNA. Doug Williams of the international team defeated Masato Yoshino of the Japanese team, singles match, and then Kaz of Team TNA defeated Ultimo Guerrero. So uh, the points there go to the Team International and Team TNA. Ricky Pro on the 12th of July in Shinjuku. They had a WEW heavyweight title match. Tomohiro Ishii of GBH taking on Mamet Sasaki, the champion. And Ishii picks up a win. Tomohiro Ishii is the new WEW heavyweight champion. Uh, formerly held by Yano, formerly held by uh, Makabe. They've, GBH has been um, a part of this invasion angle of Apache Pro for uh, a while now and um, it kind of ends with Ishii because Apache Pro not long after this they close in uh, June of 2009 um, and in 2010 Kanemura, Kentaro Kanemura, another guy that's held this title um, and Tetsuhiro Kuroda started the promotion up again, uh, Apache Pro that is, uh, this time they based it in Osaka. So since winning the title here in July of 2008, Ishii didn't defend the title until 2011 uh, and unfortunately lost it to Kanemura, unfortunately for Ishii. But um, that was his first defense like three years after winning it. Um, and then Apache Pro are pretty much done from here since we're talking about their future. They lasted until 2016. Um, and uh, the WEW title still lives on, however. Um, there was a bit of an offshoot uh, promotion of Apache Pro, Pro Wrestling A-Team, and that remains active to this day with the WEW Heavyweight Championship um, a part of it, but I think that kind of ties a nice little bow on the WEW Heavyweight Championship and the Apache Pro invasion for now. That's all kind of over for us. Back to DNA quickly, on the 13th of July they held Victory Road in the Reliant Arena, Houston, Texas. About 3,000 people showed up, which is apparently said to be disappointing given um, 
the show was built around the Houston native Booker T challenging for the TNA title. And um, apparently this building can hold a lot more than that. But um, the World Cup continued here, uh, perhaps came to an end, actually. So we have a third round, four teams, elimination match. The rules of this one are there's only two wrestlers in the ring at all times. Any member of any team can be uh, tagged in at any time. And members of each team are eliminated uh, just, you know, the normal pinfall submission type deal until only one team remains. And that team would be considered the winner of this round, earn three points in the New Japan, uh, sorry, not the New Japan Cup, the World Cup. So this one went uh, Ray Bucanero defeating uh, Tyson Ducks, Averno eliminating Puma, Saban eliminating Milano, Yoshino eliminating Averno, Guerrero eliminating Curryman, Bucanero eliminating Williams, Kozlov eliminating Guerrero, Saban eliminating Bucanero, Kozlov eliminating Saban, and Yoshino eliminating Kozlov. So Yoshino picks up the win. Team Japan. Um, oh, actually, sorry. The match came down to Yoshino and Shelley. But Shelley won the bout by pinning Yoshino after his signature, the automatic midnight maneuver. So it was actually the TNA team that won this uh, round. Apparently very well received, this match, by the way. And then the fourth and final round of the World Cup tournament was held later on in this card. Uh, it involved one member of each of the teams in a four-way Ultimate X match. So Team International had Davari, it was Kaz of Team TNA, Naruki Doi of Team Japan, and Voldemort Jr. of Team Mexico. Uh, Ultimate X is when there's the two steel cables um, attached to the supports at each corner of the ring, and they just form an X above the ring, and um, there's an X hung in the middle. So to retrieve the X, you've got to kind of climb along the um, cables. Um, and then Kaz ascended one of the steel supports before jumping off towards the center of the ring and slamming his leg onto a Davari who was holding onto the cables. And this action forced both of them to fall and crash onto the ring, which then allowed Volador, uh, he climbed the cables and retrieved the X to win the match. And that was four points for Team Mexico. So that put Mexico in the lead in the final and um, Team Mexico were awarded the trophy uh, by Mike Tenay and the TNA Spanish commentator, Willie Urbina. Um, I mean, apparently this another thing about how they well TNA is doing at the moment. Houston said to have quite a large Hispanic population. Um, and the reaction here was pretty subdued for a place that really should have plenty of people going for Team Mexico, or at least excited and interested in them. So um, yeah, not, not good signs for TNA here. The main event was for the World Heavyweight title. Uh, as mentioned before, Booker T challenging Samoa Joe. Uh, it was a no contest. Booker was busted open on the ring post um, after just a beat down from Joe. The referees and security ran in to try and stop it, but they all got taken out by Joe as well. Then Sting comes in and tries to tell Joe to stop as he was choking Booker. So Joe leaves the ring with Sting at first, and you figure, well, he's going to attack Sting, but you know, there's got to be a swerve coming. But no, he just actually turns back and goes back to beating Booker, and then Sting jumps in to yell at Joe again. Sting's supposed to be a babyface, uh, by the way. And so is Joe, in this match at least, because Booker just turned heel. So Sting's out there trying to protect the heel, which is Booker, and then Joe flips off Sting, so then Sting hits Joe with his baseball bat, and then Charmel steals the title for Booker, his manager, and then Booker leaves with the title without having won it. Um, so... 
it appears that Sting turned heel here. And apparently the show went off the air with a Fire Russo chant, referring, of course, to the, I guess, the head writer at this point, Vince Russo, the TNA. Let's go back to New Japan. On the 13th, the new tour, New Japan Soul, in Gunma. Okada defeats Yoshihashi. Of course he does. Iska defeats Naito. Bernard and Fuller defeat Honma and Ishii. Uh, Tenzan picks up a win over some other GBH guys in a three-on-three three match. The main event uh, was a couple of legend guys and Nakanishi defeating Nagata and a couple of Rise guys. On the 16th, Naito takes his turn now. He beats Yoshihashi. Iska defeats Yujiro. Bernard and Fuller are still undefeated. They defeat uh, Gato and Jado. Inoue and Nagata defeat Anderson and Makabe of GBH. There's a uh, Legend versus GBH match uh, with Tenzan involved. Legend gets the better of that one. And then they face uh, Rise in the main event and Legend get the best of that one too. The next night on the 17th, Yujiro defeats Yoshihashi. Gato and Jado defeat Okada and Taguchi. Bernard and Fuller defeat Ishii and Yano. Akira defeats Iska by DQ um, in just four minutes. So obviously Iska went too far or some of his GBH buddies went too far against Akira. But then that somehow turns into the main event, which is Akira, Nakanishi, Inoue and Nagata who managed to defeat uh, Iska. Anderson, Makabe, and Honma. On the 19th, Hirasawa takes his turn of beating Yoshihashi. Gato and Jado defeat Taichi and Tiger Mask. Iska defeats Okada, back on the losing column there for Okada. Bernard and Fuller continue their undefeated run. They beat Makabe and Honma in tag a match. Um, for Rise, Goto, Minoru, Devitt, and Nakamura defeat Legend. And in the main event, Nakanishi, Inoue, and Nagata defeat Anderson, Ishii, and Yano of GBH. I don't know if I mentioned um, Carl Anderson joining GBH. It's not as if it was to too much fanfare anyway. I mean, he's, he's a lower card guy. Um, I know I talked about when he came into the company in the New Japan Cup because he replaced um, Nagata, but he just impressed in his time there, so they kept him around. Um, on the 20th of July, still on the New Japan Soul Tour, no limit, Tetsu Unaito and Yujiro defeated, oh actually no, they teamed up with Okada, and they defeated together, Yoshihashi, Super Strong Machine, and Taichi. This is a different kind of opener. We had Taguchi Tagamask and Inoue defeating Gato Jado and Anderson, Akira defeated Minoru in singles action. Liger defeated Devitt in singles action. Iska defeated Hirasawa in no surprise. And then uh, a Rise team defeated GBH team and a uh, team of Nakanishi, Choshu and Nagata defeated Tenzan, Chono and Koshinaka in the main event. All Japan. This is... Not quite. There's a few... Uh, okay, I see what's going on here. Um, I'll mention this match. We had Soya and uh, Hijikata, which is the um, junior heavyweight champion, defeating Hiroyoshi Yamoto, Yamamoto. Oh no, Yamoto. No, Yama, Yamato. Gosh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. The person I'm letting you know about this for is Seiya Sonata. Sonata for All Japan. He's uh, someone that'll become very relevant in New Japan soon enough. But um, there's a junior heavyweight league, the All Japan Junior Heavyweight Tournament going on. So we had um, Kaz Hayashi defeating T28, or maybe T28. Um, apparently Hayashi's working with a broken rib and he pinned T28 here. Um, and then Kondo defeated Kai. Uh, the Americans on this All Japan tour are uh, Tai Kea, Antonio Thomas, Phil Atlas, 
Zodiac, whose uh, name is Aaron Aguilera, and uh, Silver King from Mexico is there um, as well. But I'm not going to follow this tournament any more closely. There was just some key matches here. Keiji Muto and Nishimura teamed up to defeat Satoshi Kojima and Taru. Now, the reason this is relevant is because it's Kojima's return to action in all Japan because he had uh, 15 weeks out for his elbow surgery. Uh, damage done by all those lariats, no doubt. And it's pretty common for a guy returning from injury to lose. So Kojima, he got stuck in with a bunch of chops and elbows and lariats, kind of showing that the right arm's strong and healthy, but he still took the fall to Nishimura. Uh, he got rolled up. Um, so yeah, Kojima's back uh, with his uh, former tag team partner, Taru, or before he left. And then in the main event, it's the uh, champions, though it's a non-title match. Minoru Suzuki and Taiyo Kea defeating Akira Raijin and Suwama. Uh, Raijin pinned, um, was pinned by Suzuki in that one. Back to... No, hold on. Will, is there... I'll finish up with this. This is a good way to finish up. It's a big show in Sapporo on the 21st of July. Um, over 5,000 people in attendance to see Yoshihashi is a, um, sorry, Yoshihashi Taichi and Tiger Mask defeated Naito, Yujiro and Okada. Gato, Jado and Honma defeated Taguchi, Koshinaka and Super Strong Machine. In a singles match, Inoue defeated Izuka, but it was by disqualification. Goto Milano and Nakamura defeated Hirasawa, Riki Choshu and Nagata. Tenzan and Chono teamed up to de defeat Anderson and Ishii. And then in the main matches here, we had for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team title, Minoru Mundevitt defeating Akira and Jushin Thunder Liger to take back the titles. Lots of pipelining in this one. Uh, the crowd loved it. The champions were controlling the match for the most part until Devitt pinned Akira with the Sunset Cradle. So that's the second championship for Devitt uh, after a, a pretty fun match, which you can watch if you trust what I believe to be the Japanese, no, sorry, the Chinese uh, YouTube uh, type website, Billy Billy. So I'll link that back down in the description there. For the tag team titles, of course, the champions, Togi Makabe and Toriyano, MVP. They went up against the undefeated Giant Bernard and Rick Fuller, but uh, they are no longer undefeated. Yano pinned Fuller. They they really booked Bernard and Fuller strong for the tour leading up to this, but because um, of course they're hoping that Fuller can pick up where Tomko left off. That was such a dominant team in 2007. Um, so we'll see. But the dominant tag team of this year so far, 2008, has been Makabe and Yano. And then to the main event for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, Keiji Mudo taking on Nakanishi. And I have this match as well from Billy Billy, uh, linked in the description. Um, they have tried to build up Nakanishi in recent weeks, picking up a, a couple wins. Um, he's kind of, I think the idea is that he's a bit of an under, underachiever. And um, that's why the fans are behind him because he's been around for so long and he's you know I, I think a lot of people would have expected him to be a champion but he, he's never quite got there and um, this is a great opportunity you know Keiji Muto is obviously extremely talented but he's an older guy and this is Nakanishi's chance so um, he gets worked over though with the typical knee targeting Muto but uh, Nakanishi comes back with several power moves in a row Muto kicks out of each when he's pinned. And then Nakanishi gets Muto up in the torture rack, but Muto attacks his face to escape, and then hits a shining wizard through the ropes. And uh, then he drops Nakanishi on his head after pulling him back off the apron through the ropes with a, um, he kind of draped him on the middle rope and yeah, dropped him down. There's another dragon screw, another shining wizard, but there's still fighter Nakanishi. 
There's another shining wizard, but that doesn't keep him down. Another, and then another, and Nakanishi is still kicking out of the pens that follow these. Mudo keeps going at him with shining wizard, and Nakanishi keeps getting back up. Mudo finally changes course, lands a moonsault, and that finishes the contest. Mudo retains the title. Kurt Angle and AJ Styles, by the way, looking forward, have both been announced for August and um, a couple of shows. And that leads us to the G1 Climax tournament. That's what's also coming up. Um, but there's a little bit to go until then. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Thank you very much for listening to this one. And until next time, have a good one.